What's up Legends, it's Dom here, and today we're going to go through some of the most frequently used common cards in Elder Scrolls Legends, because I made a video ages ago on really rarely used legendaries, and I thought this is the complete opposite, let's just go through some common cards and get some good ones for any kind of deck. So starting off with Strength, some really common commons that you'll see a lot of people using will be Circle Initiate, Morkel Gatekeeper, and Rapid Shot. Now I'll start with Rapid Shot, as I thought it's the most frequent of these three, the reason why it's such a common card, and you'll hear these words repeated a lot throughout this video, is that it can do a very, very rare case of removal if your opponent's units are weak, or it could pop a ward so it can get around certain keywords like that, and most importantly, it has draw power, as draw power is just excellent at getting through your deck and getting you a card which might be really useful for the situation you're currently in. Next we have Morkel Gatekeeper, a free cost 2-2 with Prophecy Guard, Summon, give a creature 2 extra power. Now what makes this card so frequently used is the fact that it's a Prophecy. It can come out of nowhere and even if you do just draw it, it has good enough stats that, you know, it's not annoying to have in your hand and being a complete brick. And the fact that it's got Guard as well can then slow down your opponent's turns and their moves and having it be able to give any card of your choice extra power that means that it can kind of fix and work better in certain situations. And finally, we have Circle Initiate, which is probably the rarest of these three, but it's just a very nice card, because if you can get off its beast form very easily, then you've got an excellent body for two cost, and Prophecy just helps it so much. And with that, we'll now move on to the Intelligence cards, which I have chosen, which are Lightning Bolt, Spirit Knife, and Cunning Ally. Now, Cunning Arrow is one that I personally am not the biggest fan of, and for some reason the whole effect hasn't fully loaded, but basically it's a free cost, free free, and when summoned, it will put a Firebolt in your hand if the top card of your deck is an Intelligence card. And the reason why I don't usually run this is because even if there's a 1% chance of the top card of my deck not being Intelligence, I just... My luck's so bad, I hate to rely on cards like this even if the odds are so heavily in your favour. I mean, of course, if someone gives me a deck and it has this card, I will give it a run, and there are other RNG cards like this that I will give runs. Because, again, what makes this such a good card is that free cost for a free free on its own, it's not bad, and the ability that sometimes you'll be drawing a nice, very cheap removal card as well is just an excellent kind of add-on to what you already get. And then, speaking of removal, we have Lightning Bolt and Spirit Knife. Lightning Bolt is amazing, because not only can you get it off Prophecies, but it can also target your opponent's face. Meaning that if your opponent's got 4 health or less left, and they've completely just blocked up both their lanes, you can just pop them in the face of a Lightning Bolt, and it's absolutely hilarious and rage-inducing if it happens to you. And who doesn't love rage? When it comes from the other person, of course. And then Spirit Knife, again, it goes down to these key points. It's pretty much removal, with dealing 7 damage to a creature, which will kill a lot of things. And it's draw power. And having that kind of mix of removal and draw power, even though it's an expensive card, is just excellent. As, you know, it's two very key points in a deck for, like, the kind of assistant synergy cards. Now, moving on to Willpower... We have Execute, Dramora Channeler, and Piercing Javelin. And as you can see, it kind of follows a similar route to the Intelligence cards, with Execute and Piercing Javelin both being removal cards, and that's what they're based on. While Dramora Channeler was a bit more of my weirder pick, but I'll explain that in a second. So Execute destroys a creature with two power or less and costs one. If you draw this near the start of the game, it's so good at pushing your opponent back a turn or two and kind of really giving you the early game advantage. While if you draw it later, it's always nice for just pretty much finishing off maybe a smaller unit that your opponent's got out, and you don't want to waste an attack on it, and you'd much rather use an attack on something else. And then Piercing Javelin, oh my, where do we even begin with this card? Five cost, destroy a creature. Excellent. It's got Prophecy as well. Getting it off a rune can completely save some games. So, yeah, Piercing Javelin is just an excellent card for removal, even if you're running like a, a, a slightly mid-range deck, or a mostly aggro deck, it's sometimes nice just to have a Piercing Javelin, just in case your opponent's done something which has completely stumped you, just to stop their plays, 
And then Dramora Channeler, the reason why I've gone for it is because it's a free cost 2-2 with Prophecy. The Prophecy is what makes it great here, and its ability of giving you a minimum of 4 health back when it's summoned. Just that ability to be able to heal and have a body on the board is just great in my opinion. Now moving over to Agility, we have some fancy units. We've got Fighters Guild Recruit, and we've got Daring Cut Purse, and we've also got Spoils of War. And, you know... This video is pretty much just me saying the same thing for 10 minutes. It's a bit of a con, but hey, it's it's a video for you. And, you know, the more the merrier. So Fighters Guild Recruit, what makes this excellent is that it is a wall. It goes for trades. It doesn't matter what time of the game you're in. You can be near the very end, and this is your final rune. Your opponent's got an Alduin. They've hit your head. You've just got a Fighters Guild Recruit. It's now your turn, so they can do nothing else. Fighters Guild Recruit can bloody tackle Alduin to the ground and just decapitate him. Yes, he's dying as well, but he is slaying what people are saying gods can't even slay and make the Dragonborn go into the freaking afterlife just to kill. But Fighters Guild Recruit comes along and just bonks him on the head with his lethal, and that's what makes him great. He's got guard and lethal. He is a wall, and if your opponent's only got one buff unit in that lane and they don't have any removal in hand, it's great for those trades and just destruction. And Daring Cut Purse as well. Prophecy, and it's just Pilfer Ability. It's a simple card. That's what makes it nice. It's a very nice and simple card. There's not really much else to say about it. And finally, Spoils of War. Well, zero cost draw two is just a dream. I mean, there are lots of opportunities where you only get it down to like a four or a two cost card, but still, just having the ability to draw two extra cards and fin through your deck and having that extra level of consistency is just really great. And the fact that it's a common as well makes it such a nice include to any agility deck, really. Now, moving over to Endurance, this was one of the ones where I kind of struggled a little bit with because I don't know why, I guess I just... I don't really ever make that many Endurance themed decks which aren't well very much stuck to some specific theme why did i say theme twice i don't know anyway on with the video let's just do this mentor of the watch it's got prophecy it has a guard it slows down your opponent's moves it also gives a card in your hand guard which can also work out really well for setting up things for later and as it's not random and you have that choice it's well, excellent because you know you're making sure that a dead unit isn't going to grab guard which is just great. Tree Minder, he's just nice for accelerating the game and slowing down your opponent as he's got guard and he gives you an extra like magicka permanently, which is just, you know, brilliant. It means that you can use your stronger endurance cards, which is what endurance is meant to do. And with those cool little plays, you can do some really powerful stuff and kind of set up your late game, which is what most endurance decks go for. And then finally, Enchanted Plate, what can I say? draw power we're back to there again and i thought it'd be nice to include an item on this list and you do see you do see the occasional enchanted plate here and there because it is just quite a nice card even though it's only a kind of plus three to health for two cost it's still decent it means that you can keep a unit which is nearly dead alive a bit longer or just a weaker one kind of make it much more reinforced and finally onto neutral we have crushing blow midnight snack and merchant's camel now, one thing I will say straight off the bat is Midnight Snack is a dragon deck include. But when it comes to just playing the game normally, he's probably never going to be in your deck unless you are very new and you just need a card card for your new deck and a different attribute where you're lacking cards. Because, I mean, him having Prophecy and Guard, it's still good. It's just the last gasp effect and speeding up your dragon plays is so useful that that's what he's mainly built around. And Crushing Blow, it's pretty much just a weaker version of Lightning Bolt. And, you know, the fact that you can hit your opponent directly, even if they've built up a wall, or you can choose to hit units, it's just excellent. It's a nice bit of removal, or kind of game-ending punishment if it ends that way. Plus, the art's kind of cool, just having someone getting pinned to the ground in a tavern. We love taverns. And um, finally, Merchant's Camel, it's just really good draw power even if you do have to discard two of the three cards and this will sometimes involve discarding two amazing cards just to get one perfect card for your game plan it's it's nice it's thinning your deck it's kind of making your draws more consistent 
and your percentage to draw your crushing blows, which could end the game like that, have a higher percentage. So these are probably the three which I'd say are quite common. And that's what I'm going to end the video on. The most common common cards, or frequently used common cards, so the title's not as confusing. I hope you guys did enjoy this one, and if there's any other kind of more talkative videos you want to see me do, whether that's about Legends or just me about myself, let me know in the comments.